Hello, and welcome to Tropico 6 on console. Uh, this game actually came out on PC back on uh, the 29th of March, and it's going to be coming to both the PS4 and Xbox One uh, later this year on, I think it's the 27th of September. So, first thanks to Calypso Media for providing VGR with uh, an early access code for the, the console version of the game. So in this video I'm just going to be taking a look at what uh, Tropico 6 is going to be like on console with a slightly different control scheme and, and UI. So I've loaded up the first uh, story mission in Tropico 6. So if you've not played Tropico 6 it has both um, a sandbox and a sort of story campaign which consists of about a dozen or so um, story missions. So this is the first one which kind of introduces the game, gets you familiar with a lot of the uh, the kind of early concepts and it's entirely set within the game's colonial era. So the game has four eras, uh, starting in the colonial era you then progress to uh, the world wars, then the cold war and finally the modern era. Um, so that's why everything in this game is going to look like it's from the late 1800s because that's when the game is sort of taking place. So you can see like the, the crane when I set up that rum distillery um, is a very old piece of equipment. Um, so it, in the start of the first mission you start with some basic infrastructure, you start with a, you know, a dock just so you've got some money and uh, people coming in and one farm, but that's about it. Um, and then you're given a, a series of missions to kind of get your uh, economy started. So I've started building a rum distillery which is going to turn the sugar that's uh, coming off the first plantation I built into rum, which I can then export. And you'll see there, I've just finished a, uh, a fishing wharf, so they're also going to be bringing in food which can be uh, eaten by the people on the island. Because obviously if I'm using all the sugar for, uh, for exporting rum, uh, I need a uh, you know, food supply. So during the uh, the game, you'll get missions from the different factions that are in each era. And in the colonial era, you've got two major factions, which are the Crown and the Revolutionaries. Um, if you look down at the bottom left, you can see that I've got a mandate time of seven years, six months. So essentially, I'm playing the Crown-appointed governor of this island, and they've given me uh, seven years and six months to uh, to keep managing this island. And if I uh, keep completing missions for the Crown, Oh, uh, enjoy me trying to build a straight road for far longer than it should take to build a straight road. This is, this is a, uh, I would say this is down to me rather than the game. <laughs> um, so yes, as long as you keep doing missions for the crown and keep them happy, um, then you'll get the option to uh, expand your mandate time through mission rewards. But you've also got the revolutionaries who are opposed to the crown and they're trying to kind of work their way towards independence for the island. And there's a revolutionary population on the island which you can help grow or suppress. Um, and doing missions for them will give you a variety of different rewards. So here we go, I've just completed this mission for the crown and I can choose to extend the mandate time by 12 months. Or I could take $3,000 but at this early stage of the game, I want it's to make sure job. that my mandate's not going to run out, because the game would end if my mandate runs out. So you see now they're asking me to build team ports, and that's basically helping you at the start to realise you've got to expand off of the first island, because there's multiple islands on this map, and there are resources on those islands which you can't get on the first map. Um, and also, as you'll see in a moment, opening up those other islands will also open up additional uh, story quests for the uh, the first mission. So you can see there that that sort of remote island is really a mining uh, platform, and then over here um, there's lumber and coconuts, which coconuts relate to a mission that you get in in this uh, first story mission. You can see I've now uh, built a library which was a demand that the revolutionaries had. And you can see that they give me the option of bringing in more revolutionary immigrants, or just money, or a random blueprint. And a library is going to be very useful in the long run, because it's going to generate research, which I can spend on um, investigating new edicts. So here we go, we've got the start of a new, uh, 
New story, we've found Penultimo. So Penultimo is really the advisor throughout the game. Imagine my joy at being back on an island with Rick and this is the start of uh, like, this the main story of this uh, this particular map. So he now wants me to build a coconut harvester, um, which coconut harvesters are pretty minor, but it's particular for this mission. Oh, by the way, I don't suppose you've seen any valuable metal on your travels? Any gold? No. My governor will not talk, but not too loudly, as walls are ears, and not too softly, or shall not So this, this is again advancing the, uh, the main story. Now we've built that coconut harvester, um, which we don't really need to maintain after we've built it, um, because it's just advancing that bit of the story. Our revolution is as yet only marginally glorious, but... With your continued support, Governor? The Crown's advisors commissioned an inventory of your island's resources. This expensive survey suggests... A lot of the uh, the Crown quests will be either to set up trade, um, trade routes like this, or to build particular resource buildings like lumber camps, rum distilleries, um, and things like that. You can see I've now built a pirate cove, which was one of the... Um, objectives that I needed and I've set up gold mines all throughout this island so that's now generating a lot of gold that I can use to export uh, or indeed to now fuel the uh, the pirate cove and set up the gold smuggle um, uh, which is a special raid that you can do on this mission which uh, specifically is basically smuggling gold out of the islands without the crown knowing the crown is merely disappointed You can see the town is starting to take shape. We've got two docks set up, and we've also got a lot more infrastructure now set up on the uh, the smaller islands. There we go. Gold smuggle is completed. Once you've done this once, you can actually repeat the gold smuggle uh, export. Oh, savior of my unworthy life. Let me prove my value. Penultimo is sneaky. Penultimo is clever. And Penultimo So now this is expanding on the, the gold smuggle story, and we're now going to smuggle gold out of the islands inside coconuts, which was the purpose of the coconut harvester earlier on. So you have to set your, uh, your mind to secret protocol, which is uh, only available in, in this mission for this particular story. So now that, now that the gold smuggle is done, I don't necessarily need the pirate cove for the story, so I can just start using it to, uh, to do other raids like going and finding the Brandenburg Gate, which is going to be uh, a useful item to get earlier on in the game. It basically means that none of your... If you, if you can build it, it means that none of your citizens will have extreme political views, so it makes it less likely that there'll be rebellions. Crown is uh, catching on to what you're doing with those coconuts. So almost there for the Brandenburg Gate, and you can also use the Pirate Cove to basically send the pirates off to recover resources that you can't get on your islands, uh, like going off to recover certain kinds of uh, raw resources, or just to go and get more people by rescuing them from other islands or from the sea. Oh, uh, here's another instance of uh, me completely botching to make a road. 
You'd think that making a straight road would be a fairly simple task. Not so. That being said, the uh, the control scheme for uh, ah, so here we go. The uh, gold smuggling plan is complete. I've successfully exported the gold nuts, um, and as I said before, this export route is then available for the rest of the uh, the mission. I've been chatting with the king, and we agree you're doing well, making money. What? But life's not. So the the crown now wants me to build a theatre. Um, Yes, uh, what I was saying, the the control scheme for the um, control uh, for the console version of the game um, is actually easier than I thought it was going to be to uh, to control. Um, I have played other games like this on uh, on a uh, console before, so I'm not a complete novice to the control scheme. But that being said, it was uh, surprisingly easy to get to grips with. If you've played this on PC, or similar games on PC, and you're used to moving a mouse around, pointing and clicking, uh, then it's probably going to feel a bit different. But certainly I got used to it very quickly. So here we go, we've completed our theatre. Ah oh, yes, and the, uh, the Crown has obviously discovered what I was doing with the coconuts, and is now planning to assassinate me. It is possible that this is not a trap. It is also possible that I so this is going to highlight another thing that you can do in the game, which is take direct control of uh, El Presidente, who's your your leader on the island. Um, you can look individually at any citizen on the island, and you can tell them to do things um, and so on. With the um, the president himself, uh, you can get him to visit buildings to um, kind of boost production of uh, whatever that building is doing. And you can see we've now recovered the Brandenburg Gate, so we can build that on our island, and then that's going to provide a, a benefit to our community. And it builds a little different from, from the other buildings. Ordinarily, you'd have to get a building crew to go in and put it together. In this case, uh, a Zeppelin just comes in and drops it off. All rather convenient. There we go. So this is, uh, you can now see we've got visitors coming in, and that's going to decrease the number of uh, radical people within the island. Here we go, we're following El Presidente. And as I said, you can highlight any individual citizen like this, but you've got particular things that you can do with uh, the president. So I've, I've told him to go and visit the theatre. When you set up a game for the first time, you can actually choose the the look and the character traits of your particular Presidente. More, Governor, more. So there we go, he's gone into the theatre. You can see the, th the symbol above to represent that he's there. Governor, I am shot. Oh, alas, poor penultimo. As I reached for the peanuts, Something went bang, then bang again. Ah, yes, so uh, didn't quite get you, but uh, Penultimo did take the bullets. Um, and you get this uh, amusing set of uh, choices. I actually wasn't sure what to pick initially because I didn't know if this was actually going to have an impact. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't. Um, this I didn't see the, the sort of... I went for praise the staging because I just thought that was the more amusing option. I didn't see that come up again later in the mission, so I don't think it makes a difference what you pick there. So now that the crowns tried to assassinate me, we're now leaning a lot more towards the revolutionaries, and they want to build defences on the island because they're anticipating an invasion by the crown. So there we go, we're building guard towers. We'd actually already built um, a couple of guard towers yeah, and a fort, um, so we kind of skipped through some of these missions. So at this point we need to choose 
um, a particular kind of happiness that we want to focus on as we kind of build up towards independence, food, faith or liberty. Um, and each of those is dependent on different factors. So I went for liberty and a key way to maintain liberty early on is to build um, newspapers. So here we go, now the revolutionaries want me to declare independence and for that I need an average approval among the revolutionaries of 60 and a population of at least 60 supporting revolutionaries. So at this point in the game it's basically a matter of trying to increase liberty and also um, basically just doing missions for the revolutionaries and trying to improve their standing. So you can see for this uh, mission I get a reward of plus 5 standing. Um, and also doing missions for the revolutionaries, a lot of the rewards are more revolutionary immigrants, so that helps to address. Uh, here we go, and now I can declare independence. And I could choose to um, declare independence violently, or what I did was just pay the crown a set amount, and they'll overlook the island leaving. And in that case you don't actually get invaded. So there we go, and that advances us to the the second second stage, but that actually also brings the first story mission to an end, because the subsequent missions take you into additional eras. So with the island complete, it's going to just show us what we've built up in this first story. Um, and I think this is fairly representative of the amount of stuff you might be ex expected to build during the first mission. I think this was about two hours of gameplay overall. And I definitely, you know, took some extra time towards the end um, to just build up uh, infrastructure and build up the other buildings that I had available while I was waiting on getting revolutionary standing and building up the revolutionary population. Um, but you remember as well, you can also jump into Sandbox and that actually starts you uh, in the colonial era or another era if you want to start further on. Um, and then there's no sort of hard end to, uh, to this mission. You could progress straight into the World Wars and keep on going straight through to the modern era. So you see, we never really expanded onto the easternmost island, so there's obviously a huge amount of land. I, I believe you can also load up all of these maps into um, both the sandbox and multiplayer. So uh, there's quite a lot of uh, of different maps for you to build on. And there's also a map generator. Once again, thank you for watching and uh, thank you to Calypso Media for providing VGR with a copy of the game. Uh, if you're interested, do check out Tropico 6 on console when it comes out on the uh, 27th of September on both the Xbox One and PS4. And for more uh, content, please do be sure to check out VGR's channel. We have a weekly podcast um, that we put up, and we also do a variety of other video content.